Hello, my name is Tyler McMinn with Aruba Networks, and this is the Networking Essentials Part 2, where we're going to follow up with link aggregation. In the previous video, we had closed off talking about our spanning tree and validating that spanning tree was actually blocking on one side versus the other. In this portion, we're going to be able to utilize both of these links between our access switches by enabling link aggregation. So thank you. Let's jump on in and we'll get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do in this is create a link aggregation. We saw how to do that in the theory portion, now we're actually gonna deploy it. And as a best practice, it's recommended to shut down the physical links while you're setting up this link aggregation to avoid any inherent problems that might come up. So we'll shut these down, we'll create a lag on both sides. Lag one will be set up as a trunk with native VLAN 99 on both sides and assign both links to lag one, then enable it. So we create this logical link as a replacement for the configuration that we had on the ports. We're gonna move that configuration to the logical link aggregation, and then the ports get applied that link aggregation. You'll see what I mean as we go through. So first step is, let's shut down both these interfaces. And while you could use some sort of editor to make this a bit easier on us, we'll go ahead and just kind of copy and paste this stuff in. So I'm gonna go in first and disable the redundant links that we're using. We should be using, and let me kind of shrink this up a little bit. We should be looking at ports two and six as part of our bundle here. Uh, and in fact, I believe it does. Yeah, interfaces two and six, we're gonna simply shut those down. So interface one, one, two through, ah, uh, not through, 116, just two and six, not the ports in between. So kill those with a shutdown command. And I can repeat that on both sides as I go through, but I'm gonna show you something at the end here when we kind of bring it all together. So I'm only gonna do this on one side for right now. Interface lag one, we're gonna say no routing, enable LACP as an active protocol. So I'll X out of this. I'm gonna create a new interface, kind of like we did VLAN one except we'll call it lag one. We'll specify that it is a switch port rather than a routed port. And we'll specify that LACP is active or mode active under that interface. All right, so now the interface should be created. Let's go into it and actually assign our configuration. If I do a show interface brief, you'll see we now have this brand new lag one port, just like a physical port, just like a logical port, the lag port is a logical interface with no settings on it right now. So I wanna kind of replicate the settings I had on port two before onto this new link aggregation by allowing my VLANs to pass. And I should see it show up as a new trunk port once this is done. Currently only port two is my trunk. So I'm gonna extend this across just to the link ag and then I'll put both port two and six under it. So let's say VLAN, trunk and then we're going to allow our vlans i'm just going to allow all for simplicity purposes there and we can set the native vlan on this as well as vlan 99 uh, which i didn't show in my notes but that's easy enough to do native 99. all right so now with that configuration done we're looking pretty good we can go under our physical interfaces and assign those to that lag interface. So show interface trunk. I've now got lag one set up as my native uh, native VLAN 99, allowing all VLANs just like I originally had on port two. So let's go under our physical ports, interface 112 and 116. And to assign it to the lag interface, all I type is lag or link aggregation and the number. Since this was lag one, that I'm looking at, I just simply press enter and that's it, you are done. So the final step is to go under the lag and do a no shut and then go under the ports and do a no shut to bring those up as well. If I look, show IP interface brief, nothing there, show interface brief. The lag is actually in a down state right now. So we're gonna go under interface lag one, do a no shut down there, show interface brief. Still down because it doesn't have any ports up on the other side, that's another issue. I've only set up one side, but I need to set up the other side as well. So before I do that, before I bring up ports two 
and port six, let's configure access to, because I've done no configuration on that whatsoever. So one way that we can make this a little bit faster is if I do a show run, and again, it's, it's just skipping on through. So I'm gonna put the page command, do a show run again for running config. What I'm looking for is any configuration that's missing between these guys. And this is a good troubleshooting tool if one switch is working the way you want it, the other switch is not. Often you'll do uh, a side-by-side -side running config to see where these guys might be uh, deviating from each other. So let's run this and we'll do a show run again on both sides, show run again. And what do we see here? Oh, I didn't put a page, so page. Oh, maybe I did. So they're kind of lined up. They're a little bit off from each other, but that's okay. We can kind of sort them out here by scrolling up a bit. And you can see we've got server, we've got our VLANs, got our VLANs, our spanning trees enabled. Nothing really different there, but see, this is our interface lag one. I'm just gonna enter down to go line by line, just pressing the enter key and do the same thing on the right-hand side. And that's where you see the first difference. Right after the management port, the switch that's not configured with lag has no configuration on there. So I'm gonna grab these commands by just simply highlighting them in PuTTY. It allows me to do that. Go to the right-hand side, quit out of that show run, hitting Q. Go to configure mode, and I'm gonna right-click to paste. And boom, pop, 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 boom. It just pops those commands in there, just like they are completed on the left-hand side. I'll exit out of that and let's do a show run again. And now we should be able to see that our link aggregation matches on both sides um, pretty much exactly here. Under port two, we have lag one assigned. Port two here, we have all this other configuration. So if I go under interface 112 and 116, the only command I really need to put in here is lag one. I could copy and paste it, but that's pretty easy to do. Again, let's do a show run and take a look here. And now lag two, which is up on the right-hand side, is um, shut down on the left-hand side here. Uh, but that's okay, we're gonna bring up the left-hand side access one here in just a bit. So po both port two and six have lag one assigned to them. I don't think there's anything else that we need, but we'll just take a quick look through here. Yeah, nothing else is really required. The only thing that we're missing is we've got to bring up um, the lag interfaces on both sides. So interface lag one, no shutdown. I did that on the left-hand side, but I'll do it again just to be sure. So interface lag one, no shutdown. And then the physical ports. On the left-hand side, uh, this is kind of squished, but on the left-hand side, my ports two and six are ultimately administratively down. On the right-hand side, two and six are up. The reason port four is up is because I have a host plugged into it. So let's go ahead and bring open, let's bring that port up, uh, port two and six on the left-hand side on access two. And that should allow us to see our link aggregation actually come up. So show interface brief. And sure enough, our link aggregation, which is trunking on both sides, native VLAN 99 on both sides, is gonna come up. It's blocked on the right because it wasn't up yet. Now, if I refresh the command to run it again, I'll see that it's currently up. So just because you ran the command, it's not gonna update the screen unless you run it again when you do show commands. If we were doing debugs, then that would populate the screen. But in this case, nah, you gotta show commands, you gotta show them. So that is it, a quick way to configure one side and then copy it over. And we even took an extra measure to make sure we didn't bring up the ports until we were completely satisfied with our config and then validated that it was working. What we wanna check with our show interfaces command is that our traffic is actually being utilized on both interfaces uh, and just confirm that it's running without any kind of loops because they are both up. So one way you can do this is show spanning tree, which would show me that I now have a new lag interface that's forwarding and it's able to, let me do this on the switch one side, access one side, 
it should be forwarding and not blocking on either side here. So in fact, it is forwarding. It's our best path to reach the root switch, which is switch two. So spanning tree is not blocking that link aggregation. And then if I do a show interface statistics, I should see that port two and port six are designated as part of that link aggregation. And we're seeing frames on both of these. So if we had a nice spread of traffic with dozens of or hundreds of different client devices, you would see a fairly decent balance of traffic between one side or the other. That is link aggregation. Pretty cool. And we could do a continuous ping off of our devices here if we wanted to, just seeing that we still have reachability, which is working just fine. And on PC4, I could do a ping back to 172.16.99.1. That traffic's going up. And I could do a ping to three. That traffic's going up. So we have full reachability between both sides. So pretty cool. We confirmed it. We validated our pings. We're all set. So we're going to stop there. This video covered the configuration of link aggregation, as well as showing you a few commands to do some configuration, some few tips that you'll pick up over time as you start working with this on a daily basis, maybe. In the next video, we're going to do our final lab demonstration. There might be a little pop quiz. And we're going to look at an issue that we've been skirting around this whole entire time. I'm going to set this up so that issue is front and center, an issue that we're going to solve in part three. So thank you very much for your time. I'll see you guys in the next video.